Lysite mutations can be very harmful because they will affect the primary mRNA products, which then affects the mature mRNA products, which then in turn affects the final protein product, which then causes genetic diseases. Now, splice site mutations can occur at sites where splicing of the intron happens, or it can occur at sequences near these sites. I'm going to talk briefly about the splice sites. Firstly, the acceptor site, which is the 3' prime end of the intron. It has the sequence AG. And then the donor site, which is the 5' prime end of the intron, has the GT sequence. Obviously, this is referring to the primary mRNA molecule, not the mature one. Now, one of the things that splice site mutations can lead to is the activation of cryptic splice sites. Now, cryptic splice sites are basically just splice sites that would occur naturally inside exons, but the primary mRNA molecules are typically not spliced there. This splice site is only used when a genetic mutation occurs at the splice sites or near the splice sites that would activate it. Note that it doesn't always lead to this. This is only one of the consequences. Now this happens because in this example, the splice site sequence here could be mutated so that there is no splice site at this point. And therefore, when it undergoes splicing, this whole part is spliced out because this part contains the cryptic splice site. So then you end up with part of the exon 2 missing, like this. The next type is intron inclusion, and this can be partial or entire. So in this example, the GT sequence is switched for the AT sequence, so this is just an example of base pair substitution. In this specific example, of course, anything else could happen. So as a result of that, this sequence that is supposed to be the donor site has become something that is not the donor site. So then another donor site within the intron, which is another GT here, will cause splicing there. And this, in turn, will cause only part of intron 1 to be spliced. So then the rest of intron 1 is still stuck here, as you can see. Another example of intron inclusion would be this. So due to technical errors, this is actually meant to be a C. So then normally, this would not be a donor site. So then the intron would not be spliced here. However, when it undergoes mutation, the C turns into a T, which ends up with another donor site right here. So then, as a result of that, the intron may or may not be spliced here. However, it will definitely be spliced here. So in this illustrated result, no net effect will happen and the protein will remain normal. However, if the intron had not been spliced here, and this sequence has stayed, and only this bit with the donor site right here has been spliced out, then that would leave part of the intron inside the mature mRNA molecule as well. Another type would be exon skipping. This could occur when the acceptor site right here has been mutated so that it is no longer an acceptor site, and this donor site here has mutated so that it is no longer a donor site. So then you would have only two donor and acceptor sites, which is this donor site and this acceptor site. So then when splicing occurs, this entire section will be spliced out, and that includes the exon 2. So then in the mature mRNA, there is no exon 2. So to summarize this video, splice sites mutation occurs at acceptor sites or donor sites or sequences near these sites. They are caused often by point mutations or base pair substitutions and insertions and deletions. They can change the final protein product. They activate cryptic splice sites sometimes, which can cause partial or entire deletion of an exon. And they can also cause exon skipping, which is slightly different from cryptic splice site activation, as well as partial or entire inclusion of an intron. Thank you for watching, and please like and subscribe for more. If you have any requests, feel free to leave them in the comments.